Layton? Here. Mrs. Seiler? Here. Mr. Hinton? Here. Ms. Caldwell? Here. <laughs> Well, um, if you can join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. 4.0, are there any adjustments to tonight's agenda? There are none. Great. 5.0, public comment on the agenda for tonight? Okay. Oh. Good evening. My name is Jackie Perry. I live at 215 Black Point Road. I came here to thank those persons who are retiring for all the service they have given to this community. And I probably hired most of you. <laughs> and for that, I'm grateful and thankful. And for those of you who are stepping up, you're getting a continuing contract, you're getting a second year and a first year, good luck to you, because we need great teachers. We have great teachers. Big shoes to fill in this community. And I'm very proud of that. I also didn't get a chance to give Dylan a hug. I, I didn't want to embarrass him. <laughs> if half of our students at Scarborough High School do as well as this young man, I, I sent him an email and I said, you have got to come back to this community eventually because we need your leadership and your compassion. He is one fine man. We have many fine students. And for the school board, uh, an alert. There are three bills coming up probably next week that have to do uh, with negotiations. And if any one of them passes, it is going to cost this community money, a lot of money. So what you need to do is you need to get in touch with your legislators. I've already done that multiple times. And the main school boards is, is uh, lobbying against them. But please pay attention. And lastly, I have a difficult time watching the meetings. You may or may not know I wear hearing aids, but you must speak into that mic because I usually watch television with it about 27 on the volume, <laughs> and I'm lucky to hear you at 87. I'm very serious about that. So good luck to all of you. I wish you well. Stay well. And thank you again for your service to this community. Thank you. Thank you. Six point zero recognition. Six point one our retirees. So this is one of my favorite school board meetings of the year because it really is more like a celebration than it is just a formal meeting in public. Um, tonight, not only will we honor our retirees for their many years of service to our students and to our district, um, we will also, uh, much like Jackie said, be passing the baton in sort of a way that where we invite our teachers who have been probationary teachers for the last three years to accept a continuing contract. So it's like bittersweet. It's sad because we're seeing colleagues um, and dear friends move on to other things, um, but it's exciting because they get to be here and kind of model for our younger staff or our less experienced staff um, what a great educational career can look like through the years. So we'll start with um, honoring our retirees. And tonight we have our principals here and directors to come up and speak about each of the retirees that work specifically in their buildings. Um, and so we'll start with Diane Netto first, the principal of our middle school, who will honor Randy Sue Allen. 
And Randy Sue, maybe we'll have you we'll have to stand <coughs> near Diane. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so Mrs. Allen took on teaching as a second career, joining Scarborough Middle School in 1995. And during her 24 years of service here, she has taught science, English language arts, math, and social studies as either a multi-age or a sixth grade teacher. Right now she's a sixth grade teacher. Um, and she is also the coach of our sixth grade math team, which has experienced great success over the years. Mrs. Allen is always working to improve her practice and meet the needs of her students as evidenced by her achievement of national board certification. And this year she served as a mentor to four of our middle school teachers who are also seeking their national board certification. So that was a wonderful thing for her to do, for her colleagues. Students have appreciated Mrs. Allen's approach to teaching, which is challenging, but also caring and fun. And in her retirement, Randy plans to travel and spend time with her grandchildren. So congratulations, Randy. Yeah. So after you, we, your principal or your director says a few words about you, we have a gift for you. And then the school board would like to honor you. Dr. Netter will have you stay at the podium to honor Donna Hamp. Great. So Donna is not here with us tonight, but I definitely want to acknowledge her and speak about her. Mrs. Hamp joined um, Scarborough Middle School staff in 2001, first as an ed tech and soon becoming a teacher. In her current position as a math support teacher, Mrs. Hamp has spent many years navigating the mathematical journey at the middle level and helping students close the gap and develop greater confidence. She has been able to develop skills in even the most reluctant and anxious mathematicians. She is described by her colleagues as caring, thoughtful, and collaborative. This is exemplified through her work as our Sunshine Fund coordinator at our school. Um, which is set aside to support staff members in times of need, grief, or celebration. And in her retirement, Mrs. Hamp plans to travel and um, is especially looking forward to going on some cruises. So, <laughs> well, so congratulations to Donna. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, I would like to invite Denise Turner to the podium. So Denise Turner has taught health education at the middle school for 22 years, joining the district in 1997. In addition to her role as a teacher, Denise has been a field hockey coach. Uh, she also spearheaded the Baby Think It Over program. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> to all those parents who endured that. Um, she has assisted with the bike and walk for AIDS that she and um, Tom Griffin did for a number of years, and she has also served as an active member of school committees. Denise seeks speakers on a variety of current event topics to share their specialties with her health classes and has really made sure that the curriculum at Scarborough Middle School has really stayed current in health. Her high energy, dedication, and enthusiasm have contributed to our school being recognized as a school of excellence for health education. And Denise embodies all of the components of wellness that she teaches. And in her retirement, Denise looks forward to traveling far and wide to satisfy her need for an adventure 
And I think that even includes an upcoming trip to Hawaii. <laughs> Congratulations, Denise. The next retiree is Martha Witten. Hello. So Martha began her career in the Scarborough Public Schools in 2003 um, as a literacy, in a literacy support position at Pleasant Hill School. In 2008, she joined Scarborough Middle School as a literacy specialist, and she is currently our humanities instructional coach. Most Recently, in her job as instructional coach, she has supported teachers by providing resources, helping on the school's curriculum, analyzing test data, and coordinating professional development. Students will have met Mrs. Witten in classrooms as she's modeled lessons or helped with star testing. Everybody loves that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Her caring and thoughtful approach to working with students and staff has left an impact at Scarborough Middle School. Um, I, I would especially point out the work that she's done around um, furthering independent reading for our students. I think that's definitely been a big piece that Martha has done. And um, in her retirement, Mrs. Witten um, is going to enjoy traveling with her husband, <laughs> spending time with her sons, but most of all, moving to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Martha. like to invite Principal Crosby to the podium to honor some of our Wentworth retirees. <laughs> Ann Ants, would you please join Principal Crosby? since 2001 for 18 years, but she has been in education for 37 years. 38. 38. <laughs> I stand corrected. Who's counting? <laughs> we'll talk later about her directness. <laughs> Over her impressive career, Anne has been a special education teacher, a school counselor, a school chemical dependency consultant, a school counselor again, a kindergarten teacher, and at Wentworth she has taught third grade, fourth grade, a blended 3-4 classroom, has been a lead teacher, and for half a year the interim assistant principal before happily bouncing slash sprinting back to her classroom <laughs> where she is currently completing her final year teaching fourth grade. Through it all, Anne has remained steadfastly focused on her students' learning. She genuinely gets a kick out of the adorable things nine-year-olds sometimes say completely out of left field. She is quick with a laugh. She loves to share stories from her school kids and is a loyal team teaching partner to her beloved colleague, Katie, and has been a member of 
really our most veteran member um, of the Wentworth School leadership team and an outstanding leader on the Portland, Portland, on the Purple Learning Community. <laughs> Anne can always be counted on to represent the voice of her team to help solve any problem unless it involves a schedule <laughs> and, always, <laughs> and always hold students at the center of decision making. I cannot imagine a more steadfast, aware of the big picture, direct and respectful, level-headed colleague. Anne, I'm getting a little choked up here. She will genuinely be missed. In Anne's retirement, she plans to spend more time at her home in Florida and is looking forward to a flexible um, schedule while her dear husband, Ed, continues his career. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see her subbing at Wentworth from time to time, but probably not on Mondays or Fridays or if it is too nice out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Rainy days are good. <laughs> Next, I would like to invite Joy Drew to the podium. I wore high shoes, but it still yes. doesn't matter. <laughs> Joy Drew has been our music teacher at Wentworth since 1992, so for 27 years, but really her entire life has been in a school setting. The proud daughter of a school principal, proud mm -hmm. graduate of University of Maine at Orono, and a music teacher prior to arriving at Wentworth, Joy has dedicated her career to teaching students to love and appreciate music in the way that she does. Joy passed along her love of music to both of her own children, her beautiful daughter Ashley, and her son Justin, who recently earned his doctorate in music. Anyone who has had the opportunity to see a winter concert under Joy's direction can see her passion, feel her energy, and perhaps wonder, like I often do, if she has actual magical powers <laughs> in the way that she is able to support eight and nine-year-olds to per perform with such gusto and precision and rockin' moves and pure sweetness. She has a knack for finding and showcasing hidden talents, providing little or not so little notes of encouragement and giving every student their moment to shine. Joy's colleagues share that she ha always has a song for the moment and for every occasion. She's a dear friend and colleague, creative and inspirational. Our school song, to the tune of Beethoven's fourth, is that right? Fifth. Beethoven's <laughs> close. fifth, close. Better known, appropriately so, as Ode to Joy, has been conducted and performed by Mrs. Drew hundreds of times, including as a tribute when she was the conductor on the spot at this year's band concert. In her retirement, Joy and her husband slash greatest fan, Tom, and their chocolate lab slash most spoiled dog in the whole entire world, Maggie, are off for great adventures. Most excitingly, as parents of the groom at an upcoming wedding in DC in the fall. Joy, you have huge shoes to fill, and we're gonna miss you so much. Uh, well, well no. they're kind of <laughs> <laughs> Four and a half. Congratulations. Next, I would like to invite Allison Marchese to the podium to recognize some of our special education teachers. Our first retiree will be Ann Dudley. Um, 
Good evening, everyone. I have three people to speak about tonight that can't be here, but I want to uh, brag about how fantastic they are. Ann Dudley has spent her entire professional career as an elementary special education teacher in Scarborough, 39 years. She remembers working at the Oak Hill School on the Black Point Road, the Bessie School on Route 1, and Eight Corners, which has been her home for many years, 25, I believe. Anne's colleagues describe her as dedicated, passionate, skilled, intelligent, patient, kind, warm, flexible, a team player, generous, kind-hearted, creative, brilliant, diplomatic, caring, loving, empathic, experienced, calm, hardworking, and just wonderful. I think after 39 years, she deserves all of those adjectives. I describe Anne as a woman who was born to teach. It just is who she is. She has a firm hand, but a soft touch. You can see and feel the joy she has with her students, whether laughing at their antics, celebrating a learning moment, or giving a hug when needed. All of these qualities will make her grandmother of the year as she retires to further enjoy her family and four granddaughters. Uh, teachers like I Anne inspire us. So. I'd also like to speak about Dr. Lois Grockey. Uh, she has worked as a psychologist at York County Counseling, Sweetser Children's Services, Spring Harbor Hospital, RSU 57, and has spent the last five years in Scarborough as a school psychologist. Lois was instrumental in developing a new threat assessment protocol for the Scarborough schools. She is known to be thoughtful, caring, thorough, collaborative, sincere, intuitive, considerate, conscientious, creative, and an advocate of students. She simplifies problems and remains calm, a woman of many talents, though we tease her that technology is not one of them. <laughs> Lois plans to travel to the West Coast to visit her son and daughter, to go down to Mexico to see friends, and to pick the fiddle back up in a contra dance band. She is a person of many interests, but top of the list is playing pickle, and her goal is to move up from a 3.5 to a 4.0 ranking. <laughs> she promises us that she will be available to consult or do evaluations if needed, but I'm not sure how she's going to fit any of that in with all of her retirement plans. So, hats off to Liz. Susan Hackett has been an elementary gifted and talented teacher with us for the last 15 years, teaching reading, creative writing, math, science, and a variety of seminars. Prior to Scarborough, she also taught kindergarten, French, music, fourth grade, was the assistant director of international and domestic education programs in Portland, Maine, and a book factory coordinator curriculum curriculum coordinator in Virginia. Colleagues describe her as being passionate, dedicated, and an advocate for gifted and students for their unique cognitive abilities as well as their social emotional needs. Through her ability to differentiate and connect with students, she has been able to help them think deeply, solve complex problems, be creative, and challenge themselves. Susan's personal creative approach was incorporated into many projects with her students, just as well as in the design of her ceiling display rack in her classroom at Wentworth, part of the construction plans. Uh, she was very, going to be very busy with her retirement as she just put her home on the market last week, and she plans to move with her husband to Keene, New Hampshire, to the small college town to enjoy the culture and arts they provide. So thank you, Susan. Thank you. Next, I would like to invite Monique Colbertson, our Director of Curriculum and Instruction, to the podium. And today, Monique will be, oh, Monique will be honoring Peggy Wallace. Peggy? 
I have the honor um, to talk a little bit about Peggy Wallace. Um, <clears throat> Peggy started her career as a teaching principal um, in none other than Cutler, Maine. She also taught preschool in Montessori schools from Hawaii to Falmouth. Uh, her years in education are far too many to count, uh, but our Scarborough students have benefited from her teaching expertise for 24 years. She's in that 24-year club up there. She came to Scarborough as a multi-age teacher, teaching K-1 and 2, all in the same classroom. She held that job for six years before moving into the literacy support position, which is her passion. Uh, I came to know um, Peggy in that role, uh, and at one time uh, in this position, it took her to all three primary schools where she worked with the staff who were working with our readers in each of those schools. Several years ago, um, we were able to move to a model that allowed her to be in one building at Eight Corners School, which is where she started as a multi-age teacher. Uh, and she's the academic support teacher there um, at Eight Corners School. She's helped many students over the years grow as learners uh, in both reading and math, actually, um, as well as support teachers. She was always there to help mentor teachers, particularly new teachers in the building. Um, and she did so by sharing ideas and listening to teachers and sharing those wonderful strategies of hers that help all students learn. She will indeed be missed, not only at Eight Corners, but amongst her colleagues in the academic support programs across all schools. She plans to travel cross country in a small camper. Um, <laughs> this camper, as I understand, is color coordinated with her vehicles. It's a matching set, uh, red. and <laughs> red of course. <laughs> And she'll be visiting national parks, you'll be hiking and sightseeing, and of course, reading all the way across the country. Congratulations, Beth. Next, I would like to invite Principal Susan Ketch to the podium. <coughs> and Joanne, she's coming. <laughs> Together, Principal Ketch and Joanne Sizemore, our assistant superintendent, will be honoring one of our nurses, Pam Gill. Yes. Come on up, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we think that the word that best describes Pam is dedication. Pam is always calm, cool, collected, under pressure, and we think that Pam's ER experience has been a positive influence on the nursing practices throughout our school system. You know that Pam initially started nursing for us at the K-2 level. Lately, she's been enjoying seeing these students at the high school as high school students. It's rare to be able to work directly with students at both the beginning and end of their public school career. But Pam has been able to do that, and she has enjoyed working with them. There are currently new laws regarding immunization in the state of Maine. <laughs> and here is another place that Pam has shined. This is a project that she stayed focused on along with many other responsibilities. And she didn't give up until the high school was completely compliant. <laughs> Pam, we are great, very grateful for the loving care that you have given our students throughout Scarborough Public Schools, and we hope that you have a wonderful summer up at your camp and a fabulous retirement. Get to camp soon so your Rumford neighbor can welcome you home. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. We always used to ask him what's happening in the ER so we know what the pulse is. <laughs> Another one of her many accomplishments, our school board member, Nick Gill. Thank you. I won't do it twice. Distracted. Um, <laughs> Joanne is also going to recognize a few of our other retirees. Um, Joanne, who will you be honoring first? Uh, first, Betsy Gianetta. Betsy could not be with us this evening, but we wanted to um, say a little bit about her. Betsy began her career here in Scarborough 23 years ago um, as a PE teacher. And uh, Betsy is a quiet and passionate in promoting the health of our K2 students. She worked with a strong K-2 staff to bring programs to our school. The 5210 program is a strong point. You can always, and you can always find Betsy uh, setting up activities for our students. We wish Betsy the best in her retirement and time to relax and enjoy. Um, so thank you, Betsy, for all that you've done for the students at Pleasant Hill School and the staff, because she's also helped promote wellness for our staff there, too. <laughs> Uh, the next person is Mary Student Hillman, who has been at Eight Corners School since 2001. The friendly face of Eight Corners. Whenever you go into Eight Corners, you will be greeted by Mrs. Hillman. Her interactions with student, students is funny and always can get the students to smile in a very serious way. She's being serious, funny, and the kids know exactly what she's doing. <laughs> she keeps the staff on their toes and doesn't panic and will always stay calm and say, we got it. Don't worry about it. And um, so we wish Mary the best also in her retirement, and thank you for all that she has done. And our school board chair, Leanne Caslionis, will take the podium next to honor our youngest retiree, but most experienced school board member sitting before you here today. <laughs> Dylan, would you please join Ms. Casalionis at the podium? Sure. <laughs> Just like the other night, Dylan, I have to read it so that I don't cry. <laughs> yeah. Um, it has been such a pleasure to work with you, Dylan, as a student representative for the board for the past two years. Your hard work, your dedication, and positivity have changed this board while simultaneously raising the bar for future student reps. You inspired us to include slides for committees at our meetings, which ensures we are not only providing more consistent information to the community, but also ensures multiple methods of communication across the board. Your advocacy and excitement for the great work happening at all phase levels will endure as we continue to invite students to present, advocate, and update us on activities at every opportunity. Ooh, I was in awe by the number of awards you received um, senior award night on Tuesday. And I quickly recognize that the same passion and attention to detail you've shown as a board member is evident in who you are and in everything you do. I have learned so much from your inside view of a day in the life in our schools when you highlight the many clubs, student leaders, and ongoing activities at our schools. Your updates help us more than any memo or message ever could. Mm -hmm. It is this candid and direct insight which reminds me at each meeting why public education and ensuring that we provide the best possible one to our students is so necessary and valuable. Your humor, dedication, and positive attitude will be greatly missed at each meeting. We know you're off to your next great adventure in life, but hope you'll drop us an occasional update on what sort of greatness you're up to. Remember us when you are in your degree. We wish you all the best and congratulations on your upcoming graduation. We know you're going to do great things.
Recollected. Um, at this time, if the retirees would like to stay, you're welcome to, but if you're ready to start your next great adventures, <laughs> you're welcome to head out. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Well, they're about to miss the best parts, just so you say. all know. <laughs> Tonight, we have the opportunity to recognize two of our students. The first student I would like to recognize is Jacob Lewis. Jacob Lewis and his mom, Amanda, are here with us tonight. <coughs> Jacob, if you want to come to the podium, you can, or you can sit right there. I'm just going to brag on you for a little bit. Um, Jacob is, you've probably seen Jacob if you've been to any school event that has ever happened in the Scarborough Public Schools. He is one, an, one amazing photographer and he captures all of the fun and learning and passion and excellence that defines the Scarborough Public Schools at every possible moment. Um, tonight I wanted to recognize Dylan because he was recently published in an educational leadership magazine. Um, what you have up there is the PDF that shows um, what Jacob spoke about. And this was really um, an amazing article that was all about teen voices and what teens really need from schools. And Dylan talked about, um, or I'm sorry, I'm looking at Dylan. <laughs> did, did I say Dylan <laughs> more than once? <laughs> Sorry, erase all of that. I'm talking about Jacob. Um, Jacob talked about how important it is to offer learning supports in schools so that students of um, varying needs and can access the supports they need to feel fully included um, and to realize their full potential, which I think that it's fair to say Jacob is doing on a daily basis. Um, I recently learned that as he fit, goes into his senior year next year, he's already earned 20 credits, I believe, um, and has been accepted to at least one college who heavily recruited him. Um, and he's uh, really following his passions and taking what he's applying here in school, both in his academics and in his social passions, um, onto the next level. So I wanted to recognize you, Jacob, for your bravery, for your passion, for your commitment to all of us, and um, really to the work that you've done in capturing um, all that's happening in student life here in Scarborough. So thank you for that. Awesome. Give me a hand. And, and also by Jacobs here, I wanted to just show you this beautiful yearbook that has recently been um, disseminated in our high school. This is such a creative um, yearbook. I mean, when you open it up right here, where the Scarborough Red Storm, it has a little storm warning, and this is an aerial view of our high school. And then the transition pages are so creatively designed. Um, and Jacob is the, the chief editor of the yearbook. And so just to give you an example, I'll share one of my faves. Um, here's the It's Raining Freshman transition page as it goes into um, the freshman section of the yearbook. And then it says it's a category one. An excessive rain advisory has been issued for Scarborough. Freshmen are coming down hard and will build up. <laughs> There's also. Um, Another great transition page in here that uh, introduces the athletics, and I think this picture is just amazing, Storm mm -hmm. the Field. Um, and then it goes into many of the athletic activities that our students are involved in. And I didn't have a chance yet to count all of the pictures, but I am pretty sure at first <coughs> glance, this yearbook might have the most candid photos of any yearbook ever published. And I think that Jacob might have played a role in that um, with all of his photography. And this morning when I was talking to him and Eric Huntington, who's um, the teacher of the yearbook class, I guess some of the students said there weren't enough. They felt like yeah. there weren't enough photos. I think they're spoiled. <laughs> they're getting spoiled by Jacob's many um, publications of this. So this is a beautiful yearbook. 
you did a great job as editor. I know you didn't do it alone. You were sure. he was There's a list of staff in the front. <laughs> sure to um, point out that right in the front it mentions all the others that were involved. But I just want to thank you for all of your contributions, not only here in Scarborough, but nationally, um, using your voice to really help tell your story and help others realize what excellence looks like in education. So thank you, Jacob. <laughs> Our next student recognition is Casey Maddox. Casey, could you please come to the podium? Maddox. So Casey was recently appointed to the State Board of Education as a student member. Um, and she is brave and courageous and is willing to talk with us a little bit about what that process entailed. Um, so I turn the mic over to you, Case. OK, so to start from the very beginning, it was just before February break. And I received a random email from my French teacher that just said, I'm forwarding this to you. Hope you're interested. So I filled out an application. and I. You know, it was just for giggles. Like, you know, when you're in high school, you apply for things and you just hope for the best. And you take every opportunity that Scarborough gives you because they give me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, a couple weeks later, I had to do a Skype interview, which is really great because I got to meet um, the girl who I'm actually replacing, who's from Falmouth. And I got to speak with a couple of the members of the board. And then uh, I got another email that I got to go to Augusta and testify. So I had to go speak in front of the Committee on Education and Cultural Affairs, which was a really great experience. Um, obviously, I had to speak to why I was qualified, but it was more of a formality. And it was really great to get to talk with them. And I really think that they care about students' needs, much the same as you lovely folks do. And um, I'm just really looking forward to representing Scarborough. And I'm really thankful for everything that the Scarborough educational system has given me. And I have to do one other thank you and embarrass them because I haven't done this yet in public. Thank you to my parents. I guess you guys did the best. And I probably wouldn't have been able to do this without you guys. And much like with the retirees, if the students want to take this moment to head out, you may, but you're more than welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> new business, 7.1 appointments, 7.1.1 second year probationary professionals. So this is a building up a little climax here, um, to a climax here. I'm not going to read every single name, but in your agenda package, you have uh, received a list of second year probationary professionals. And so again, um, when a teacher is hired as, in, as a new teacher, they go through a three year probationary period. And each year, the board has the opportunity to approve them moving on to their second year. And then you'll have the same opportunity again in their third year before um, they earn a continuing contract like some of the other guests that we have here this evening. Uh, so the recommendation would be to approve the second year probationary professionals as listed in your agenda packet. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? It's unanimous. Congratulations. Okay. 
7.1.2, our third year probationary professionals. This year we have 12 uh, third year probationary pro professional teachers. Uh, the recommendation would be to approve the third year probationary, pro probationary professionals as printed in your agenda packet. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Good, unanimous. Congratulations. <laughs> Now it is time to announce our teachers who are being recommended for first year continuing contracts. Um, before I read each of their names, we are going to ask, ask, actually have them come up and get your contract. Um, super exciting. Many other folks have already received them and they've been waiting for this approval. So what we'll do is first approve them as printed, but then I will read each name and you'll come up and get your um, contract and we'll shake hands with the board. Get to go through the whole line like everybody else. Um, so the recommendation is to approve the first year continuing contract professionals as printed in your agenda packet. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Get unanimous. Congratulations. <laughs> This time I invite Lori Alves. <laughs> we'll say all the names and then do a big cheer at the end. <coughs> Darlene Boisenau. Jane Bolas. Anna Cosma. Stephanie Davis. Sandra Dumont, Ryan Facey, Glenn Fernald, <laughs> Emily Field, Tobin Hagelin, Brandon Johnson, Maura LaFond, Lindsay McDonald, I'm going to cross for yeah. <laughs> Laura McKenzie, James Marshall, Danielle Martel. Congratulations. Allison Murtha. Congratulations. Courtney Norod. Christine Roberts. Michelle Shoup. Congratulations. Patrick Volker. Good to see you again. Congratulations. <laughs> Brooke Wasden. And last but certainly not least, Garrett White. Congratulations to all of you, the Scarborough Public Schools um, staff and students are so lucky to have you. Thank you. Yes, 
I'm going to do the same. If you guys would like to go home after a very long day. <laughs> Take some treats with you. Yes. Congratulations to everyone. Congrats. Thank you so much. Congratulations. middle school science teacher. As if we could not get any more excitement, we now have the chance to appoint some new teachers to the district. The other day, I had the opportunity to interview a new middle school science teacher. Brian Lamont has been selected to fill this position created by a resignation. Mr. Lamont received his Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education with a concentration in science from the University of Maine at Farmington. He has taught science to middle school students since 2010, or 2009 rather, at both Telstar Middle School in Bethel, Maine, and most recently at Tripp Middle School in Turner, Maine. Mr. Lamont will be placed on step 10 of the bachelor scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Brian Lamont as the middle school teacher, middle school science teacher. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Welcome to Scarborough, Brian. 7.1.5, eight corner special, special education teacher. Jennifer Vitagliano has been nominated to fill this new position at eight corner school. Ms. Vitagliano earned her master of education in moderate disabilities from Lesley University in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and she received her bachelor's degree in communication sciences and disorders from the University of Maine at Orono. She has been a special education teacher in Clarksville, Tennessee, and for the past two years has been in RSU 69 in Appleton, Maine. Ms. Vitagliano will be placed on step four of the master scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Jennifer Vitagliano as an eight corners special education teacher. Second. Any discussion? And all those in favor? Unanimous. Congratulations and welcome. 7.1.6, eight corner special education teacher. Melissa Mills has been chosen to fill this position created by a retirement. <coughs> Ms. Mills received her Bachelor of Arts degree from Bowdoin College and her master's degree in learning disabilities from Northwestern University. She has over 10 years of experience with students as a special education teacher, including schools in Washington, DC, Maryland, Virginia, Yarmouth, Maine, and currently is an special education teacher in Durham Community School in Durham, Maine. Ms. Mills will be placed on step 11 of the master's plus 15 scale per the collective bargaining agreement. The recommendation is to appoint Melissa Mills as an eight, um, as an eight corners school special education teacher. So moved. Second. Any discussion? And all those in favor? And unanimous. Congratulations and welcome. 7.2, Superintendent Authorization of Summer Hires. So this is an annual procedure that the school board takes up to allow the superintendent to hire staff so that we don't miss out on um, high quality candidates over the summer when the school board meets just once in July and once in August. Um, so what you really will be authorizing is um, Joanne Sizemore as the assistant superintendent to serve in the capacity as interim superintendent and authorize those hires for the month of July. And then um, your new interim superintendent will, you'll be authorizing him to process those hires in the remaining months until you come back to your regular schedule in uh, September. So the recommendation is to authorize the co-interim superintendents <laughs> to um, be able to hire for the summer. So moved. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. And that just is a really big relief for administrators as they try to find the best um, and most qualified candidates. So thank you for that. 7.3, Wentworth School donation, the Hannaford Health Schools. So this is a donation that we see frequently from Hannaford. This time it is for the Wentworth School in the amount of $1,000. The recommendation is for the school board to accept the donation of $1,000 from Hannaford Helps um, to go toward the Wentworth School. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Is this the receipt that you get and you put it into the envelope? 
Um, thank you from Han to Hannaford for this. That's just incredible. Um, all those in favor? Unanimous. 7.4, the Wentworth School Honorarium. <coughs> so I have a little letter to read to you from um, Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study, or also known as TIMS USA. Dear Principal, thank you for participating in the Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study, TIMS. Enclosed is an honorarium for your school as a token of our appreciation for your school's participation in this important study. The study to date has been very successful because of the cooperation and participation of the children in schools. You can find further information at their website, which is listed here in the letter in your packet. Thank you for your support of TIMS. Um, and then the amount is $400, and you see that here in your packet as well. Actually, is it 800? It's the two, 400 times two, 800. I wasn't sure if that was a duplicate. <laughs> no. Don't worry, I didn't. <laughs> Not skewing the data. <laughs> Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> 7.5 the mix and mingle donation. So we have received a donation in the amount of $500 from the Mix and Mingle Square Dance Club and we'd like to request your approval. You may remember Jane Flanagan who came and spoke and encouraged all of us to get square dancing. Um, and as promised, they have made a donation back to the schools. Is there a motion to accept the donation? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, 7.6, the adoption of the school board protocols. Um, the school board met and we had two um, retreat sessions and we rewrote the protocols that are on our website. And this is how we interact with each other, um, with the district, with the community. And we're very proud of the work that we had put into this, um, but we needed to formally adopt those protocols before we could publish them. And that is what this motion is for. Is there a motion to accept the protocols as we wrote them? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. So okay. when will those be up for like, the public to be able to see? Um, those tomorrow. Um, before we go into the superintendent's report, I think there's one more recognition that we missed. Oh, sure. Under the table. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, my school board colleagues and I um, got together and chatted about wanting to recognize Kelly Johnston for the amazing support that she has given us this year as we all transition to um, this board. She's been patient, she's been welcoming, uh, she's been super, super helpful, and we just didn't want the school year to end without acknowledging that publicly and giving her a little thank you as a token of our appreciation. Here is our enrollment. Um, surprisingly, from May 1st to June 1st, we have received five additional students. Um, usually we see a decline sort of at the end of the year, so that's a little unique in the data trends. Um, and again, we're just you know benchmarking it against these other data points that we've been looking at over time. I think this is probably the last time that we'll show 2016 um, and really just be focusing on what the new enrollment study um, says about our enrollment projections. But you can see here again um, how 
important it was to do that enrollment update because it really is showing more accuracy to what our, we're experiencing in our schools. Any questions about enrollment? No. Um, another thing I just wanted to update the board about was our May PD day. We know that professional development is a big, a big important investment to us, and without the support of the board, it wouldn't be possible for us to have these days. We have very few as a district. Um, we have three total currently at the very first day of school where we can bring everyone together K-12 and then we have one day in October and then this May day which is usually like celebration slash reflection kind of day. Um, this year we decided to use this day to kind of create a springboard for some of the important work that we know is coming up ahead. So we invited a keynote speaker in, Dr. Robert Brooks. He is a well-published author. Um, What's that? Sorry, we're chatting. Okay. Um, he, he's a well-published author. Um, I have two of his books here, Raising Resilient Children and Raising Self-Disciplined, the, the Self-Disciplined Child. Um, he also is the grandfather of two students at our high school, so it was nice to have that personal connection. Um, he really, the, the focus of the talk was about shifting mindsets and how do we think about all that our kids can do, um, even when they're faced with adversity or maybe coming from some sort of traumatic background. Um, but not only for our kids, but how do we think about, how do we shift our mindset for ourselves and really help develop resiliency in ourselves so that we can be present for our students. And uh, the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. Um, I would, I just, put a couple of data points up here to show. Um, we collect feedback after every professional development event that we have. Uh, it's not always easy to get people to respond to a survey after a long day, <laughs> right before uh, a long weekend, but our staff um, were very eager to respond. And we had 298 responses to the feedback form, which asked them about different aspects of the day. Specifically, this one um, asked how relevant Dr. Brooks' presentation was to their work. And you can see that overwhelmingly, folks found it to either be extremely relevant or relevant. So the extremely relevant is blue and relevant is um, red. The little orange slice there is neutral. Um, and then we also asked them, you know, do you have at least one idea that you could apply immediately to your work? And again, 68.8% um, strongly agreed that they did, and 29.2% agreed. Again, very positive. What we did after the 90-minute keynote was um, staff then went to small group discussions facilitated by our principals and our directors and our assistant superintendent. And they debriefed um, based on three questions, really, what could you apply to your work tomorrow, next week, next month, next year? What are some of the obstacles that you might um, face in trying to implement some of these shifts in your mindset um, and or in your work with your students? And then what, what might you do about that? Um, and so it was a short conversation. We probably could have spent much more time debriefing, but folks really um, felt energized and recharged by this day. Many commented that the timing, um, having it in May, so that before they started thinking, you know, fully planning for next year, was, was very good for them. And so um, it's always, when we plan these days, we think it sounds really good and we get really excited. We've heard, we really try to listen to the staff and what they're telling us that they need, um, but I'm always eager. I was like watching the data roll in, like what are they, what are they gonna say? Um, and so we felt like it was a really great success and many folks have asked for him to come back and or to really come up with a, a clear plan on how we're gonna continue the conversation. Um, our school board member, Amy Glidden, also came and participated um, in the keynote presentation. So I don't know if you want to add yeah, anything. Yeah, sure. I, I first thank you for allowing me to do some of my PD um, that morning because I was able to put in for some uh, professional development hours um, at my services. job. Shared services. Yeah. <laughs> you can send the bill to Thornton. <laughs> Um, but I, um, I'm not surprised to see that because it, it was amazing and energizing and I, I know I took away tons of ideas that I am already thinking about implementing this fall when I return to school. But um, also, I, I mean, I, I was overwhelmed um, by the reaction that our entire district had because they were up out of their chairs giving him a standing ovation when he was done. He was very, very powerful. Awesome. We continue to study our professional development um, 
that occurred on Late Start Wednesdays. We just put our final end of year survey out yesterday on our last Late Start date, and we'll share some of that information with you um, <coughs> during our next school board meeting. And lastly, it's a busy week. There's lots of fun things going on for our seniors. Today we had our senior send-off assembly. Last night was baccalaureate, which is not necessarily something the school sponsors, but um, many administrators attended and board members attended as well. Uh, this is a little sneak peek here of the seniors walking out too, and it doesn't show so great here, but you can see all of the students K-8 around the track. And at one point when I was, I was kind of standing looking out over the um, field there, as you can in the lobby, and there was like a train of little ones running across the field from one friend, like trying to get to the other side of the track. And so the seniors went around two times, and it was really great to see the emotion and the excitement and the pride in their faces, but also in their teachers' faces that they've had from kindergarten all the way up through, and the little ones just think they're like superheroes, right, for the day. Um, and so they had lots of signs and posters and little, you know, little pallets they were waving that said class of 2019. I think um, by, the, by the end of all of this, if your face doesn't hurt from smiling, we need to have a conversation because it really <laughs> is just a, a beautiful moment. And a lot of the teachers who had the seniors who have been here that long had the class picture from mm -hmm. their, their kids who are, are now seniors. And then some teachers had like signs for their mm -hmm. kids that are seniors that they handed out. It was really, it's really nice. Yeah, and I was uh, standing next to Principal Ketch as the seniors kind of come off the track afterwards, and there was definitely some students who were choked up, and you could see that it's a, it's an exciting time, but it's also an emotional mm -hmm. time. And Dylan could probably add to that. Uh, yeah, I know that going back afterwards to marching practice, it was there were very few students who were had bad words to say about it because everyone kind of complains that they have to be at school early at 8:30 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, because this entire last week we've just been marching, so it's been a lot more later mornings. But this one event specifically, everyone was just in awe afterwards because their last time they could see the entire district, which is unheard of. You don't. It's not every day you can see every your entire childhood right before your eyes. <laughs> Thanks, Dylan. Um, the other thing I would just share with you all, uh, if you weren't able to come to the assembly, the high school leadership team does a really beautiful job of welcoming the freshmen. Um, and so you have, if you imagine the alumni, alumni gym, you have your um, seniors on the floor in their caps and gowns, and then the juniors, the sophomores who are becoming juniors, and then um, you have the freshmen who are becoming sophomores, um, and then the juniors who are becoming seniors, they're all switching their colors. They wear like red, white, or black. And then the incoming freshmen, the eighth graders, are also there. And each class, each set of class officers, so here's our senior class officers, steps up to the podium and um, gives congratulations to the seniors, but also welcomes the freshmen and talks about, like, we're here for you. We're going to help you transition. We want you to be successful. Nick Fiorello said, it goes by fast. Enjoy every moment. Um, so it really, it, it just is a really great feeling, and I think it's a wonderful way to send off our seniors, but also welcome our freshmen. So kudos to the high school for all of your work and making sure um, they understand the power of that moment. Another important note, too, is that that board right there, it, it's like a little transition ceremony as each grade moves their grade higher up. So you can't read it here, but like it was the class of 2019, 2020, all the way through 23, and the freshmen would come up with the eighth grade at least, they, and they like put their name on the board for the first time. It's just it's a really great ceremony to like kind of signify the moving up. And if you're intrigued, you can check us out on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. There's videos, there's photos, all kinds of sneak peeks into the day um, so you can really share in the moment. And that's all I have. Okay. Ah, for the chair's report, um, just a few quick updates. The contract with the interim superintendent has been completed, and Mr. Prince will be here for the June 20th school board meeting. Um, we've selected our summer board meeting dates, as Dr. Kuchenberger mentioned. We only meet once a month come summer, so July 11th and August 15th will be the dates. Same time. Same time, 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And what might be the most important piece yet? <laughs> 
Go for it, Sarah. Uh, so Van has been kind enough to give up the chair's report for the uh, our last final plug of the budget. So um, we'll keep the finance uh, update pretty short. And it's just, please just go and vote. Uh, the people who have voted already so far, absentee ballots are down pretty significantly from past years. Um, so we're a little concerned about voter turnout. So tell your teachers, tell your parents, um, tell your friends who are of voting age, please go vote. It's really important that we get the numbers out to the poll. Um, we've had great support for this budget in the town, and so uh, there's no reason why it shouldn't pass other than just simple turnout. Um, I did have one other slide. Um, just a reminder, sorry, my clicking is way off, as to what the, what the um, FY20 budget allows us to do. So again, there was, wasn't much that um, came out of the budget. We were lucky enough to, to get a lot of what the Leadership Council and, and the Superintendent proposed into the budget. Um, and so on your left is what it allows us to do, and, and on the right is what still uh, continues to be unmet, so things that we'll look to fund um, either in other ways uh, or um, next year. And then just a, a finally, this, these are the final numbers. So the final number there at the bottom, the 5.71%, that combined with the town's expenditures will result in uh, a mill increase of 2.99% or less, most likely less if it follows a trend of the past years. Um, we do have another question that's on the ballot. So the municipal question one, which, we're all which is uh, whether or not we want to join the GSEA. So we're also recommending a yes vote on that. I think Hillary will touch on that in the communications update as well. So yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so I gave Kristen my report tonight so she could track this and, you know, be ready for the summer. But I'll have something for afterwards. So I just want to start out my report by uh, giving a quick shout out to Girls Varsity Tennis. They won Woo! their regional final match. Um, this, they, so they beat Falmouth, which hadn't won, hadn't lost a game since 2008, I believe. 11 years, yeah. 11 years, it's crazy. So they are heading to states on Saturday. Um, I'm not sure what time it's at, but I would suggest that everyone goes and cheers them on. They can use all the support, and they are playing Lewiston. Do you um, know? Do you know where the match is? I don't. Okay. They don't know yet, actually. They don't oh, really? Lewiston. Oh. Lewiston High School at four o'clock. Okay. Is it the girls' softball? <laughs> So students attended prom on May 11th, which was at the Portland Club. Um, here are some of my favorite pictures. They were all taken by Jacob Lewis. Um, <laughs> some of them are from yeah. Some of them are from Memorial. Um, if you all didn't know, a bunch of the students get together and take pictures before, um, and then a couple are at the dance. You can see Daniel Weed in the corner being crowned as prom king. Um, exciting moment there. Um, Freshmen um, from the high school attended a field visit to On Semiconductor, which is in South Portland. Um, during this field visit, students were able to explore STEM fields and learn from IT specialists, engineers, and technicians. Students also toured some of the labs at On and were able to gain insight into how the company makes their technology products. And then um, for the picture on the right, I want to congratulate all the students who won awards. Um, on May 15th, which was the May Awards night. This night was super super special for the juniors who won um, junior book awards from various colleges <laughs> around the country. Um, in May, selected Scarborough High School students participated in the Safe Bay Consent Conference. Um, students from across the state helped put this conference on. Um, so it was primarily like student run and student led, which is very nice. They did some great facilitating and had some really good um, dialogue sessions. It helped teach students about the importance of consent and it raised awareness about sexual assault. And also, um, the high school's chapter of March for Our Lives attended a conversation-based event with David Hogg, who is the co-founder of March for Our Lives from Parkland, Florida. 
Um, he spoke to students across Maine about gun violence that affects millions around the country and the importance of activism and community involvement at young ages. Students who participated in the internship program at the high school created and presented their individual presentations based on their internships. Um, students gave more than 85 hour internship hours each semest um, the semester, so that was each student completed these 85 hours, which is crazy. Um, they learned lots of valuable life lessons that they'll apply to their fields of interest. Um, as you can see, these are some pictures from the presentations. Uh, many family and friends um, watched and were invited to attend these presentations. Um, so piggybacking off of Julie's report, um, I took some pictures from the senior send-off this morning. It was really nice. We got to see all the seniors walk in in their cap caps and gowns. Um, not really much else to say about that, but another thing that was super exciting was that all the student grades dress in the colors of their pep rally next year. So for juniors, my class, we got to wear black, which is the color that we'll be wearing at the pep rally next year. Um, and for all the grades moving up, and we got to move into our different positions um, in alumni gym. And also the Key Club celebrated the seniors by holding a Kiss the Senior Goodbye event where students could buy Hershey Kisses with little notes attached to them. They'd be placed on the seniors' chairs during their marching practice. And the Key Club raised $618 for the Thirst Project through this fundraiser. <laughs> um, wellness Day was held at the middle school earlier in May. This is a really nice day for students to get outside and get active and really explore fields that they're interested in, participate in really fun events. Um, from what I heard, everyone had a really great time. These are some um, pictures of kids playing kickball, I believe, and some games outside. And I also want to congratulate all the eighth graders who are celebrating their eighth grade celebration, which is tomorrow. Um, Wentworth fifth graders went on a field trip to the ecology school, which is at the Poland Springs Resort on May 20th. Students were able to learn about ecology, adaptations, and sustainability during this trip, and they also were able to eat from local grown meals at the resort. Um, there was another kind of step up day for second grade students. They visited um, Wentworth to see where they'll be at for the next year, um, kind of see where their future lies at Wentworth. And I just want to wrap up my report by showing some of the fun field trips that second graders from Eight Corners and Pleasant Hill went to. So these are from Eight Corners. <coughs> they went to Willard Beach on a fun field trip. And then these are, this is a picture from Pleasant Hill. The second graders went on a field trip to Fort Williams. Awesome. I actually also prepared something. It was more like something I'm going to read instead because if you don't know me that well, I talk a lot. But I think I'm going to read it at the podium because, you know, why not? <laughs> hey, Dylan, while you're going to the podium, back the slideshow up. I got a cute picture of Dylan that I put in the slideshow. Oh, no. <laughs> That's, uh, I put it at the beginning of the student report. Oh. I thought while you were doing your report, I think we should do a kiss and retire goodbye to fun. That's right there. <laughs> That's a great idea. Look, there he is in a senior oh, stroll. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Wonderful. So, as you know, I'm graduating. Um, I truly cannot express the privilege and honor it is to serve on this board as a student representative. As I was talking to Leanne the other day, she, we were talk, she was telling me about how this whole position was started by a student who had come up, and he was talking about the importance of why there should be student representation on the board. Now, before I like kind of go on and talk about all that, I do have to backtrack a little bit, because when I was first elected, Mr. Creech had asked if I could read the same speech I had read at the election at my first meeting. But I was too nervous as the newbie, so I didn't. So I figured, why not my last meeting? I'll read it tonight, which will be a really great transition for what I'm about to read. Um, so my name is Dylan Hinton. I am here today to ask for your vote to elect me the class of 2019 student representative. 
I first heard about this position in 2015, towards the end of eighth grade, when I still did a workshop in front of the school board focusing on getting laptops for the high school. I learned that I would someday have that same opportunity I saw when student representatives were sitting at that table with me. From eighth grade to now, I've attended countless school board meetings and attended almost all of them from last year and all from this year. And I also helped review the JICK policy, which was the newly implemented policy for bullying action prevention in the district as of 2017. This year, I worked hard to give the club's SHS a voice by creating the club fair and now the club network. And I want to be able to expand that voice to all students. If I'm anything, it would be a fighter and a leader. Here at SHS, I'm the president of both the Civil Rights Club and the GSA. And as president of both, I feel that it is my role to fight for the rights and fairness among the community. Normally, if this were a student council election, I would try and promise something to happen or make some change in the school, but that's not what this position is about. I can't promise anything to actually happen, except for this. <laughs> I promise that as a student representative, I will fight for the rights and ideas of students, teachers, clubs, groups, and the community, because that's the role I see for the next student representative. Now, if only I knew what was about to happen <laughs> as I was running. Who knew that I would end up serving, and I counted, with including student representatives, 15 school board members. I've served under four board chairs and have had the opportunity to see countless events. Needless to say, I would like to think that I've had one of the most intense student representative terms <laughs> since it started. <laughs> I'll forever be grateful for it. My first meeting was in 2017. It was the year end financial meeting. And I don't know if you remember, but that's a pretty dry meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I, I love those meetings now. But it was my first one, and I was very nervous. And that was right after a workshop that was for a long-range facility plan, which, if you remember, for those who were here, Julie and Joanne, the packets were like that thick <laughs> and this big. <laughs> so... The meeting had went till 10.30, and I remember all of the school board members and Thomas, they had all come up and they apologized for how long it went. It went till 10.30, and if only they knew what was coming. <laughs> when I was introduced to the board and my duties, I was told to report out on the board of what was happening at schools by discount, and Thomas had said that usually they'd just look at the website and report out on stuff that was, they read. I was kind of discouraged by that, so I worked with Mr. Creech to get permission to leave schools during my study halls. And I went and got to experience firsthand what was happening so I could bring it back to the board. So the administration was completely supportive of this and I was able to get a tour of every single school, which was even cooler when some of them were led by students as you've had these last few weeks. A typical report to the board was some things that had happened at a few schools and maybe some updates for upcoming events. But I was excited to report back to the board on my experience at those schools and tell them firsthand what was happening at each phase level in school, giving every school the opportunity to share the spotlight. But as I was on the board longer, I noticed that Dr. Kuchenberger was using the PowerPoint and projectors for workshops and reports, and I was inspired to try that as well for my own. From then on, I just tried to consistently improve the reports and eventually inviting groups to come present themselves. It is important to note that Kristen and I and any other stu student rep can never fully show what happens at our schools. Because just today alone, if you were to go to any school, you, I could take hours and hours worth of footage and it'll only show one class. <laughs> so if you're interested in seeing more about my path on this board, please refer to the website. But I would like to say that I've learned more about local politics, education, and collaboration, collaboration in this position than I had ever thought possible. It had opened up my eyes to education and is one of my main motiv motivators for becoming an educator myself. There are two important things that I've learned in this position that I would like to conclude because I'm assuming you all know that I've learned a lot through this uh, <laughs> process. And it's that no one, one is that no one is elected to make sure things run smoothly. They are elected to find the flaws, make the improvements, and work towards making the world a safer, better, and healthier place to live. That's why we are here to improve our schools, help the students, and support our community. The other thing is that no matter the position of authority, the power one may have, everyone is a person and everyone is human. They are all the same and there are always a way, there's always a way to work together. This position has taught me this through the experience of, and I don't know if you know this, but 
during executive sessions, it's always a great show when the administrators are making fun of each other, or right after board meetings when the board members are bantering and ranting on about their kids. <laughs> <laughs> it showed me that every person has their own flaws. And I don't think this is something that everyone notices, but it's something everyone is taught, and, but you won't truly understand it until you experience it yourself. I truly believe that we are, in here, we are here to improve and not maintain. We are here to work and not debate. We are here for the sole purpose of educating and caring for our students at Scarborough Public Schools. It would be an understatement to say that it has been an honor to serve on this board, and I hope that as we move towards a brighter future for our district, we never forget why we are all here, to include all voices, and never forget that to ask the students to get their hands dirty with this type of work, because I guarantee you there are more than two students interested in it. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Dylan. Your public speaking has come a long way, so since you were too afraid to, to say I know, that, right? That first meeting. Yeah. Oh, that was so nice, though. That really was. Okay, um, 10.0 brings us to committee reports. Oh, policy. Um, I'll go really fast to this one. Um, policies that are prepared for our first readings. The wellness policy, JLAA, and agenda planning, BEDB. Uh, the intention is to have that at our July meeting for first readings. Policies to be reviewed over the summer. The social media and communications. Our cell phone policy and relationship with law enforcement. I had on here the next meeting date to be determined. Um, it looks as though it's still going to be on the 20th. I'll send out an invite, but it'll be 4.30 to 5.30. That's it. So um, for the communications, I just have a couple links here. Um, You've, pro you've probably all seen this, it's in the Google Drive, but this is the um, budget communications timeline that we've been working off of. Um, so it's actually on the bottom too, Julie. It doesn't matter. Um, anyway, the, the, we've been doing social media posts, emails, um, print ads in the leader. There's one today. Um, yeah, so anyway, so there's one we missed. That's why it's not grayed out. Um, and then there's the second page that, that shows you, yeah, the stuff that's upcoming. Um, so, and actually we can do it. So um, I just wanted to put this out there just to let people know, you can go back to that, um, to let people know that we have a plan in place and that it's, um, we've, we've been following what we had kind of, um, determined at the beginning, at the, out, at the outset of the budget process. Um, the other thing that we did that was new this year was um, we've been doing a district newsletter and so we decided to do a budget edition of the newsletter. Um, that went out to all the families that we have on our email distribution um, and it also is in print form at the library and the um, central office. We couldn't put it out at town hall like we normally do because um, because of voting. Um, so anyway, that was that and um, and we got some positive feedback about it. So that was kind of nice. Um, we did a budget FAQ. We don't need to, you don't need to click on that. Um, that had gone out a little, that was at the beginning of the process. Um, so then I just wanted to reiterate that um, you can find us on Twitter, you can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Instagram, you can look at our website. Um, there's stuff in the Scarborough Leader. Um, we, Julie had contacted the Public Safety Building and the information about voting is up on their sign. Um, there's a sign out at Town Hall and I just noticed today when I was at the middle school that the schools also have their, um, what was called the, what, like their sign boards yeah, that have the yeah. yeah that have the voting information on that um, so I do feel like we're hitting uh, as many um, sources as we can um, and if anybody has any ideas email me or talk to me afterwards um, I have another slide sorry. 
Uh, and then I just wanted to also, um, so, so the other thing that we have been pushing besides just a yes vote on the budget is a yes vote on um, municipal question one, which is, um, would allow Scarborough to join the Greater Sebago Education Alliance. Um, last week in the Scarborough Leader, we printed this half page ad um, that um, gave a little bit of information on the municipal question one, um, and it's, it's very similar to a lot of things that have been out there already, so hopefully it resonated with people. And then Sarah wrote, um, Chief Thurlow was nice enough to give us his in the know um, section for that week, um, and Sarah wrote up an article with some information about the GSEA on that. Um, and then this is just a sampling of some of the um, social media memes, I guess, that we've, <laughs> that we've put out. Um, and I encourage everybody to go and um, if you go to our Instagram, our Twitter, or our Facebook, you can find any one of these um, and share them on your personal page. Um, so I encourage you to go and find the one that you love the most and share it. Yeah, make it your profile picture. Do whatever is at the end of my... Oh, um, and then today in the leader, although I think most, I get it early for some reason, but um, so today or tomorrow, um, this is the full page ad that's in the leader. Um, it just gives some, I mean, obviously the voting date, but it gives some general information about the things that we are able to do in this budget, um, which are in the little apples in the trees that you can't really see there. Um, and I just wanted to put a giant yellow reminder to everyone that early voting is now over. So please, please, please remember to go on June 11th at the high school and vote for our school budget and yes on municipal question one. And I have one thing to add to that too. Um, for any, spread the word, but I checked with the town clerk and anybody who will be 18 by the November election can vote in that election. Oh, so right. any parents watching, please tell their kids. You can, Dylan, they can tell vote. the kids at the high school that. I know. Right. I'll send <coughs> That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, one one quick thing that I forgot to add to the slide. Um, oh, the sorry. I, it's okay. Uh, it was my fault. Uh, the town council and school board joint finance co uh, communications committees um, are hosting our second roundtable discussion. Um, that will be held on Tuesday, June twenty fifth, at six thirty at Blue Point School. So, if you are interested in coming and chatting with some members of the town council and the school board, we encourage you to attend. Thank you. I just want to say a really great job to the communications committee. I think all of the posts are really attractive, and they're, the fact that you keep putting them out is keeping people engaged. And um, you did a really nice job. They look great. We are continuing to negotiate the teacher's contract, and we all, will also be um, entering negotiations um, for the maintenance contract uh, later this month. So uh, uh, the Long Range Planning Committee actually had a meeting today, so I can kind of embellish this a little bit. But uh, what it comes down to is that we, um, uh, the construction on the eight corners primary portables, if you've driven by there, you notice it still looks exactly the same. Uh, and that's because the construction will not begin until after the students are gone, which uh, makes a lot of sense. But I have had a couple people ask me about that, so I did want to say that out loud here. Um, as a reminder, two of those classrooms are going in. The pad is actually built to house four classrooms, two buildings, uh, each of which hold two classrooms. That's two times two is four. Um, but uh, for 1920, uh, we're just going to have the two classrooms. And then we're going to do some watchful waiting, looking at our predictions and enrollment um, to see if we're going to need an additional set of classrooms for the following year. Uh, and they are budgeted in the CIP budget if we need them. So the money's there for us, and we can start this process with a little less urgency if the numbers prove out or exceed our projections, as Julie pointed out earlier. Most of the time, it looks like our actual enrollment is, is exceeding our projections, which is exciting uh, but alarming for this committee in particular. Um, <laughs> Uh, as far as the portables at Pleasant Hill, um, a very similar situation is arising there. That would be something that we'd have to look for, not next year, but in a future year. Uh, and that would be a couple of classrooms there. Uh, a little less um, formal on the planning than we are at Eight Corners at this point, but I did want to throw that out as something that's on the horizon. 
Um, and with all these portables in, in the uh, spotlight, I wanted to wrap up our, um, our planning report by talking a little bit about um, our plan for showcasing our primary schools. The Long Range Planning Committee is focusing our, our construction conversations about the primary schools, knowing that addressing that particular phase grouping will help us more holistically address issues we have in some of our other phase levels like the middle school. So um, our first kind of step to this is talking about putting together a video, a video that would showcase some of the opportunities and some of the challenges that are happening at our schools, um, the primary schools in particular. An idea that was thrown out just a couple hours ago was the idea of having the, the uh, video be through the eyes of a five-year-old. And so actually having a GoPro on a small, uh, a small child as a way to kind of follow their day uh, through the schools and then use each stop as a way to kind of blow up and talk about some of the issues with storage, issues with core facilities, and issues with some of the other areas that are leading us to have conversations about a more permanent brick and mortar solution uh, here for our primary schools. So I just wanted to get that out there. Um, it's an active conversation, it's a directional conversation and one that I'm proud to be part of. So if anyone else from the committee wants to jump in, please go ahead. I just have a question. Please do. So what is the process to, to get to that point of talking about a brick and mortar solution to this? That is what we're organically finding out as a committee. So one of the first things we're going to do um, in the very near future, and I mean like within a couple weeks, is we're actually inviting the last steering committee from the Wentworth Project in to talk with the committee about how that steering committee was formed and what type of talent you want on that committee uh, as a way to kind of get an idea of how we build a new steering committee to take over this process. Because obviously it can't be led just by three board members. It has to right, be a much larger, question. yeah. Okay, so you create or you you start a steering committee and then that committee looks into all the information and, and, and eventually presents. fleshes out a building committee okay. and heads down that road. Got it. Do you know if that's a committee that's formed by the town council or by the school board? By the school board. By the school, school, by board. The school board, yeah. That's where we are. Okay. The town council really gets involved when you're asking for money or when you're asking to put something out of it. <clears throat> Our liaison roles, comprehensive needs assessment. <coughs> Turn the mic on. The comprehensive needs assessment group met for our third and final time for this year um, just last week. And um, I'm not really going to give much of a report because Monique and Kathy will be doing a much more comprehensive report to us um, at our next school board meeting. Um, town council. Um, there is a open town council seat also on the ballot for next Tuesday. Um, and so while you are there voting in favor of the GSEA and in vote, voting in favor of our budget, you should also cast a ballot for that open town council seat. And lastly, um, my other liaison roles are lovely, but my favorite one is on the vocational um, committee. We met on May 9th. Um, and I just, uh, I'm always inspired when, when, when we meet by um, the dedication um, and the excitement of the educators that are there, the superintendents and the principals and the guidance staff that is there from all of the different districts that send, school, send uh, students to these schools. Um, they have such a dedication to growing these programs and um, you know, changing with the times and keeping enrollment up and um, just making sure that they provide the best educational opportunities for our kids. Um, and so they um, are wrapping up their year just like we are. Um, they had their senior celebration at Merrill Auditorium on May 23rd and it was attended by um, the, each, Westbrook had one and um, Pass had one. Um, they unfortunately were on the same night this year, which we discussed as a group that next year we will schedule them for different nights. Um, but they were attended by Sue Ketch and Joanne Sizemore. No, I didn't oh, attend. you didn't attend. No. Just kidding. Okay. Oh, just <laughs> it, was, it was Greg Appleston. <laughs> oh, shoot. I'm getting it all wrong. <laughs> and I threw my pen. Um, so one of the, just to kind of wrap it up. Oh, Amy, you don't have to get this. Um, <laughs> just to kind of wrap it up. The... Um, one of the things that we talked about that we're looking forward to taking forward for next year is just how to keep um, the programs relevant and to keep the enrollment up. 
And um, so it's exciting and hopefully um, with the support of our administrators, um, we keep engaged in these programs because I think they're, they're really great. Thank you. Okay. 12.0, a motion to go on to executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056A for a discussion concerning a personnel issue not to return to public session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much for attending.